Good morning, Mountain Movers Church. You guys awake yet? No? All right, let's try that again. Good morning, Mountain Movers Church. That was a little better. All right, so for those that don't know me, I'm Remington Renfro, and this is my way prettier, way easier to look at, better half, Mara. And we're the Accelerate student pastors here. And we've been just so incredibly proud of our students. I mean, they have just been living so on fire for God. It's just been amazing. And we're excited to continue this series, Live on Fire. But uh, before I get started, I want to ask everybody in here, have you guys ever started a fire that has just gotten completely out of control? There's there a lot of has there's, got to be there, more of you people. Come on. There's a, there's a lot of wives out there that are pointing at their husbands <laughs> like he has. Like, tell them about it. I've got to see some of these or hear some of these stories afterwards. Catch me out back there. But so literally every fire I ever start goes places where I don't want it to go. Like I am the world's worst with fires and it's cursed me my entire life. I, we have a fireplace and it scares me to death to even start the fire in it because I probably use way too much diesel or fire starter or whatever I'm supposed to use. <laughs> Are you supposed to use diesel on a fire starter or fireplace? I mean, it's better than gas, but. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> but I, I remember this time when I was probably seven or eight years old and uh, I was in my cousin's wedding and my one sole job in this entire wedding was to light the candles. You guys see where this is going, right? <laughs> you guys are catching on. So I'm like all excited because it's the first time I've ever been on a stage before, you know? And so I get my cue to go up on stage and how this works is um, I take this long stick with a candle attached to it, right? And I light that candle and I use that stick to light a series of candles up on a stand. And if you would have known seven or eight-year-old Remington Renfro, you probably would have never put me in charge of being in your wedding to light candles because that was a horrible idea. But anyways, I take this stick and I light it on fire and I use it to light the first candle. And then I go to the second candle and then I go to the third candle. And I'm not all that tall. So I get to the very top candle and I'm like reaching out for it and I'm like trying to get up to it. I'm on my tippy toes. And I end up knocking the wick off of this dang candle. And a flame falls right down to the church's carpet. And I'm sitting there and like, it's taking me just a second to process what is even going on right now, you know, because this ain't the way it's supposed to work out, right? And, you know, after practicing this story and like thinking about this story over and over again, have you guys ever, I don't know if you guys know, but like 1970s or 80s shag carpet, Catches on fire really quick, right? I'm thinking about taking some of that stuff. If you guys got any at your house, I'll take all I can get because I'm thinking about making fire starters out of it. <laughs> but seriously, like, so I'm processing what's going on right now, and I'm watching this flame grow and grow and grow. And finally, I get my bearings back, and I go over, and I step on the fire, and I do a little dance on it, and it's all put out. But it was the talk of the wedding. Like, no one cared that my cousin got married at all. It was like, well... Mammy saved us all from a church fire, but he also started the church fire, so <laughs> does that count? <laughs> I'm pretty much a hero, right? Kinda. But the point I'm making here is all these fires that we started that's gotten out of control, right? They all start with one flame. They all start with one candle. And so as we continue this Live on Fire series, we've titled today's message, Ignite the Fire. And we're gonna be diving into being bold in your faith, and then igniting the fire in other people's lives. Yeah, so we want to start off, and we're in the book of Acts. And so if you want to go to that in your Bible or on your phone. But um, I'm really going to condense the first two chapters just to set the stage for what's going on. But the book of Acts is written by Luke. And the entire book is really telling us what our lives should be like with Jesus. And it's really where the church just ignites. And so it starts off and it says to Theopolis, which means friend of God. So this is written to all of us or anybody who is the reader. And this friend of God, you know, he starts off and it really just starts with Jesus ascending to heaven. And when Jesus does this, he leaves the disciples, but he had told the disciples that he is going to supply them with the Holy Spirit to supply the power. In 1.8, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 
So this is really, you know, just the start. And in Acts 2, this is where that wildfire just completely takes off. Um, The Holy Spirit comes down and enables all these people to speak in each other's languages so that they can talk to each other. And, you know, when this happens, people are one of two things. They're one, some of them are amazed. And then some of them are like, you're drunk and you don't know what you're talking about. And I laugh at this because I'm like, this is our world today. Like, we get up and we go and we try to tell somebody about Jesus and they're one of two things. They're either amazed and they're like, yeah, that's awesome. Or they're like, you have no idea what you're talking about and you're crazy, right? So it's funny because I'm like, okay, well, this is literally how this starts off. And Peter, one of the disciples, stands up and behind him, all of the other disciples stand up, which I think is incredible because who you surround yourself with is who's going to back you up when you have something going on in your life, right? And so he stands up and he boldly tells these people, he's like, you have to confess of your sins and you have to be baptized. And when he does this, 3,000 people, 3,000 end up confessing and end up getting baptized. Peter truly ignited the fire in their lives. And after this, you know, the church becomes united and they really work together. And it says that they literally shared in each other's possessions and they met every single day together as a church, one body. And then the Lord blessed them and added new believers day by day. So this is where Acts just truly takes off. Yeah, and it shows us a good example of how to ignite the fire. And then in chapter 3, it shows us this prime example of how we should live our lives daily. Um, When you go out and you ignite the fire, right, you don't just start with 3,000 people, right? All these wildfires that you hear about in the news or all these fires that you guys have started that your wives are pointing out to you, they've all started with one flame, right, one candle. And so chapter 3 goes on, and Peter and John are going to the temple one afternoon. They're going to catch this three o'clock service. And on their way into the temple, they see this crippled man being carried in. And what had happened is each and every day, somebody would carry this crippled man in and they would lay him beside the gate. It's called the beautiful gate is what they called it. And he would beg from people walking through this gate. And so just like everybody else, when Peter and John walked in, the crippled man began to beg from them. Now, I want to remind you, Peter had lived with Jesus for the last three years, right? So he was pretty sharp and he was pretty polished on his faith, right? He'd been looking for an opportunity just like this. And so he sees this crippled man begging and he goes up to him and he looks him right in the eyes and he says, I don't have any silver or gold I can give you. He said, but I will give you what I do have. And the man looks up and he's like ready for something to be given to him, right? And Peter says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. This man has been crippled from birth, since birth. And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And he picks the crippled man up by his right hand and he helps him to his feet. And his legs and his ankles are instantly healed. And the man begins to walk and he begins to leap. And then he begins to praise God. And it's just so insane. And then he goes and hugs Peter and John and they take him into the temple. Have you guys ever heard the saying, um, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, or you can teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. Okay. My wife doesn't think that's exactly how this saying should go. She thinks it should go. If you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, or you can teach a man to fish and he'll completely drain your bank account and burn up all your cell phone data watching YouTube videos on how to catch these fish. Preach it. <laughs> Preach it. <laughs> Which is probably pretty accurate to it. <laughs> but no, it's if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Or you can teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. You see, um, these guys carrying this crippled man to the gate, they were giving him fish, right? They were giving him possibly what he needed for that day. But then he was going to have to worry about tomorrow, or he's going to have to worry about the next week, or he's going to have to worry about how he could even get to the gate the next day, right? He wasn't able to move. But when Peter walked up to him and he looked him in the eyes, and he said, I don't have any silver or gold to give you, but what I do have is way more powerful than that. I can teach you how to pray. I can teach you how to call on the name of Jesus. I can teach you all about this eternal life. 
right? Peter taught him exactly how to fish. And so the crippled man, you know, goes up and hugs him, and they go into the temple together. And um, people begin to take notice of this man walking around and leaping and praising God, right? And they're like, we have walked by this dude every day, and he's been laying there begging for change. And now the guy's up, running around, leaping, praising for God. And so they took notice of that, and they became... It got to where they were crowding around this dude. Now, remember when I was telling you Peter was polished and he was sharpened in his faith, right? He, he seen this opportunity and he knew how to capture one of these amazing opportunities. And he used this as a teaching moment. He said, guys, I, I didn't heal this man. Like I had nothing to do with it. I was just a conduit, you know? He said, I called on the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And this man was healed. And you'll read later on in Acts, it says, because of this, 5,000 people became to believe in Jesus. So I want to ask you a question today. How do we ignite that fire just like Peter and John did? Yeah, so the first thing that we have to do in order to do this is we have to look for those opportunities. Peter and John were walking into the temple and they could have just kept walking by, right? You know, we all have in our lives where we're busy and we have stuff to do and like maybe we go to Walmart and we're like, okay, keep your focus, don't talk to anybody. I do not wanna say hi, just like head down, like just keep walking, right? Anybody, no, you're all liars. Like, come on, <laughs> it's true, okay? But they didn't, they didn't just keep walking. Like they stopped because they looked for the opportunity. They had spent their time with Jesus and they knew what Jesus would have done. And how do we practically do that? Every single day we should be praying, God, give me the opportunity to speak into somebody's life. God, make me bold. Let me shine a light. Let me ignite the fire in somebody else's life. But open my eyes and let me see it. That's exactly what we should be doing. And really what happens, if we're honest with ourselves, we have this light, this candle, and we come in here and we get filled up and we are on fire for Jesus. And then we go out and we either go one of two ways. We either keep it to ourselves and keep on walking and go throughout our week or whatever. And woohoo, I know Jesus, I'm good. Or... We can do what we're called to do and we can go out and we can ignite the next fire for somebody else, but it's a choice. Yeah, praise God. But you have to be looking for those opportunities. So when you have a friend that's sitting by himself at school or at work, like sit with them. When you have somebody who's struggling with something, pray over them, like look for those opportunities to be able to speak life into other people's lives. Ignite that fire. Yeah. So the second point we want to make today is you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. As the story goes on, um, Peter and John are out preaching to all this, this big crowd out there. And uh, these Jewish leaders end up overhearing it. And they end up hearing them talking about Jesus. And so that Peter and John end up getting arrested by them. And they begin to interrogate him. And they're like, okay, we've seen this crippled man laying by this gate for every, every day. Like, how the heck did you heal them? You know, like, what is going on? And Peter pipes in and he says, first off, like, I didn't heal him. Just like I said earlier, like, he was just a conduit, you know. He said, I called on the name of Jesus Christ and this man was healed. Guys, that's how we have to be every day. Like, we have to be that bold in our faith. Like, they were literally arrested, detained in jail. And Peter's like, okay, you guys got this all wrong. Like, Jesus did this, which the man they're anti against, you know, they're against Jesus. So we have to be that bold. And when Jesus left us, he left us this Holy Spirit for guidance. Um, John 16, 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Guys, if we want to be bold in our faith, we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. You know, when I'm out guiding hunts or, or fishing trips, um, all the guides I work around, we all have this one saying that we use, and it's don't guide the guide. And usually we say that when we have some unruly client that doesn't want to listen to us whatsoever, which happens a lot more than you'd think. But, yeah, why well, listen to the guy that does it every day? But, <laughs> but when we're telling the Holy Spirit the outcome, like when we tell the Holy Spirit we know what's going to happen, we're guiding the guide. 
You know, it doesn't matter what roadblock you have in your life or what you're coming against, whether it's your own insecurities. Guys, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit or whether you think that no one cares what you're gonna have to say, which is literally me and Mara, every time we get up on this stage, you're like, no, they ain't gonna listen to us. Guys, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Or when we're worried about that we won't know what to say, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Or when you're worried about the fear of judgment, that's a common one. What are they gonna think of me? You have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Or when you're just plain afraid to. Guys, he's gonna tell us to do stuff that we absolutely don't wanna do or we're not comfortable with doing. That's just a common thing, it just happens. I can't imagine when Peter went up and prayed for that man and told him to get up. You know, you think about all the thousands of people that walk by this crippled dude laying by the gate. And Peter was the one to look him in the eyes and say, get up in the name of Jesus Christ. Like that couldn't have been comfortable. I mean, he had all his peers around him. He had everybody looking at him, right? Or when he was in jail and he was telling him, hey, you got this all wrong. It was Jesus that hung this or that healed this man. I mean, that wasn't comfortable. But we have to do it, guys. And we're doing it to glorify God. You got to keep that in your mind, right? Um, there's a lot of times, especially this week, that we say, we can't do this. Yeah. Like, there's no way. Like, who are we to be doing this? We can't do it. Yeah. And we've kind of came to the realization we're right. Yeah. But here's the thing. God can do this, right? Yeah. We have to rely on him. Yeah. And the last thing that you have to do is you have to lead others to Christ. Um, we want to show you somebody in our church who is really igniting the fire in the community. And, you know, he is looking for those opportunities. He is listening to the Holy Spirit and he's leading others to Christ. So check out this video. Hi, I'm Jared Russell and I'm an Accelerate student at MMC. So the other day I was at work and I was like, I texted my mom and I asked her to bring me a shirt for the gym. And when we were on the way, I changed into that shirt, and it was my Jesus Loves You shirt. And I got to the gym, and I was working out, and this dude, he came up to me, and he was like, hey, man, not to be weird or anything, but I just, I really like your shirt, and thank you for wearing that today. So after that, I felt like I should have prayed for him. So I went up to him, and I prayed for him, and he kind of got emotional, so I could tell he needed it. And I finished my workout, and I, when I got home, he messaged me, and he was like, hey man, thank you for that, I really needed that. And it just felt amazing because I knew God was working in his life and it was just an awesome opportunity to pray over him and see his life change and plant a seed in him. So ever since that, uh, I've been able to get more opportunities to pray. So I work at a coffee shop called Waymaker and they asked me to pray one Saturday for a video. And I started doing that and as that, I just got more like bold in my faith and more willing to pray for people. And then camp started. I was worshiping one night and I just felt the presence overwhelm me. And I just, uh, I just felt like a need for a Bible study. And so this past uh, Monday, we had a Bible study with all my friends and I invited people. And we just gathered together and had fellowship. And ever since that, things have been just lining up and I've been just obeying God and everything's been going and I've been on fire for God. And that's the whole kind of mission for the Bible study is we call it fuel the fire so after camp we don't uh, lose that fire and we just have that fire for God and bring that into our school year this year and help people just that are lost and broken help them feel loved and share the love of Jesus. Jared is really just igniting the fire and you know I just have to pause and think and say, you know, what's our excuse? Like, what is our excuse? Because we really don't have one. And, you know, Peter and John, they could have came up with a lot of excuses to be able to lead this um, man to Christ. Like, they could have been like, eh, like, he's been doing that every day. Like, I don't, I don't like the way he looks. I don't like the way he talks. I, I know his past. That's why he's poor, blah, 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 right? But instead... They led him to Christ. It didn't matter what he looked like. It didn't matter who he was because every single person Jesus loves so much. And, you know, we skipped over in Acts 2. We really just talked about the church becoming unified. But if you, this week, make time. Don't, if you have time, make time to read Acts 2, 42 through 47 because this is what the church should be. The church is the people. 
and we are the church. And in Acts, the church becomes unified body of believers because they truly loved each and every single person. And they truly went after Jesus with everything that they had. And you know, they ignited that fire. And it's time that we start doing that as well. It's time that we, you know, look for those opportunities, that we listen to the Holy Spirit and we lead others to Christ because we don't have excuses anymore. Like, it's time to be the church and it's time to stand up and be bold. I want to ask you, I want to finish with this question. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins? Do you believe that he was raised from the dead? then why don't you believe that the same God who did that can use you? Because he can and he will when you let him. He's the same God who led 5,000 people to Christ. He's the same God that performs miracle after miracle that we see here, that we see in the Bible. He's the same exact God. So he can use each and every one of you to ignite the fire in your schools, in your work, wherever you're at, but you have to let him use you. Let's pray. If we want to live on fire, if we want the power of the Holy Spirit, we have to be bold first. And all of that starts with repentance. Every day you should end your day by asking God to forgive you of anything you've done, whether you even know it or not. Then tomorrow is a new day. You got a fresh start. Start your day by asking God to use you. You know, maybe you're in this room today and you've never done that. I just wanna ask you, what are you waiting for? God loves you so much that he sent his one and only son to die on that cross for your sins. And all of your past can come clean. If you want that today, no one's looking around. It's just me and Jesus. I want you to raise your hand. I just wanna know who I need to be praying for today. Thank you, I see your hand, thank you. I see your hand, thank you, thank you. So here at Mountain Members, we do everything as a family. So we're gonna say this prayer together. I want everybody to repeat after me. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I ask for forgiveness. I believe you sent Jesus to die on the cross. I wanna make him Lord of my life. Clean me and make me new. In Jesus' name, amen.